Welcome back to another episode of the Marketing Mindshift Podcast. Today, I'm going to do something a little bit different. We're going to respond to some follower comments and questions rather than just having me focus on a predetermined topic of my choice. So today's viewer statements, they're all themed around marketing misconceptions. But before I dive into today's show, just a few housekeeping notes. I want to again thank all of you for watching and remind you if you're getting any value out of this podcast to please hit that subscribe button as well as share our podcast link on all your social channels. For those of you listening to the audio only version, there's just a friendly reminder that we also have a video version of today's and all of our podcasts on our YouTube channel that has helpful visuals and links to other resources. So please check that out when you can. Now, without any further fluff, let's go ahead and dive into today's episode. This is the Marketing Mindship Podcast with Stephen Newman. Starting with misconception number one, social media will solve everything. From the beginning, Social media was mistaken as free advertising as opposed to paid advertising. In actuality, Facebook is an advertising company and you are the product. It's important to remember the fact that if you don't pay for something, you are the product. Another key takeaway as a business owner or leader is that you should embrace the fact that you don't actually own your Facebook page or Instagram or whatever it is. Facebook does. Let me say it again. You don't own your social media accounts at any time. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or whatever network is popular at the time of this podcast or reading my book, they can shut down, modify, or change your viewing algorithms to your social accounts. To complicate the matter, the name of the social media game is pay to play. Social media has evolved significantly in the last 10 years and now is anything but free. Those who both understand the dynamics and have enough skin in the social media game are the ones who are winning with social media the most. Anyone who knows anything about social media knows that it takes significant time, talent, and skill to write compelling posts that cause others to follow, retweet, share, or other things. While the big boys like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, Twitter, etc., all take advantage of their name brand recognition. There are actually over 200 social media networks. And one thing is for certain about all of them, you have to know specifically who you're targeting, what exactly they're interested in, and how to use each site to make an impact, much less have your brand become recognized enough to engage with productive conversations with your followers and convert those interactions into actual sales or desired behaviors. While you might physically know how to post something on sites like Facebook or Instagram, That doesn't mean you're good at it. After all, while you can drive a car, it doesn't mean you can fix the engine. It's the same thing with social media. Marketing professionals get paid to advance awareness of brands that hire them. We know how to track the right metrics and we know what to do when the metrics show that improvement is needed. We know how to evaluate sentiment. We know how to create shareable content. We know how helpful influencers are and how to use them strategically. So ask yourself, Are you leaving business on the table by not engaging professional help? Remember, as a business owner, your time is more valuable doing what you do best or what others can't do. You should delegate the rest. Snapchat and TikTok are just two popular examples right now of newer social media platforms that are being used by companies interested in reaching teenagers and early 20-somethings with disposable income. The only thing that you can count on tomorrow and in the future is that new platforms will keep popping up and others will fade away. After all, even as big as Facebook is with over 2 billion monthly users, it's no longer news that this platform is not the purview of millennials and Gen Z like it was when it initially rolled out. Because baby boomers are all over Facebook now, that change in the audience provided an opportunity for Snapchat, TikTok, and others to appear. The main takeaway of this misconception And while I'm mentioning it first, is that if it is the only method that you're using to reach your customers, that is simply not a winning strategy in my opinion. And many small businesses fall into the free social media trap. There is simply too much clutter in social media and it's never wise to rely on just one channel of free advertising only. If you've had trouble keeping up with all the social media platforms that currently exist, it won't get any easier in the next decade. 
The next 10 years will move significantly. The next 10 years will move significantly faster in terms of technology than most people have even begun to realize. Artificial intelligence or AI has been developed to such a level now that it will change every industry as we know it, including social media. In the near future, AI will manage social media for you and do it better than you could do it for yourself. The next decade will change far more rapidly than the last 10 years have. AI is already in the marketing environment and it will be disrupting your social media soon if it hasn't already and you didn't even know it. Let's move on to misconception number two. I don't need a marketing plan. Nothing could be further from the truth. Would you drive from the East Coast to the West Coast without looking at a GPS or a map? Probably not. Then why would you not use a marketing plan for your business? How else would you plan to reach your destination without a roadmap to get you there efficiently? In the same way, a strategic marketing plan guides you by clearly defining what tactics are appropriate and what's needed to grow your business, to clarify who will pursue those tactics, and when those tactics should be implemented. Most importantly, a marketing plan will make you understand why you are doing everything that you're doing, how it fits into the bigger picture, and how to measure progress, or what we call metrics. Without a strategic marketing plan, you are guessing. And as we discussed in chapter two, to not know is to guess, and to guess is to be unkind. Not to mention, it's not a smart strategy as a business owner or a leader. A clearly defined marketing plan must be written down with performance measured on a monthly basis and recommended adjustments made, it, made as needed. Perhaps at the beginning of your marketing journey, you simply want more customers. But as time goes by, you might focus more attention on getting better paying customers. Or maybe you want to increase your number of leads by 5 or 10% this year. Your goals will change. They always do. And they always will. But that's a good thing. But in the beginning, you need a baseline to know where you're at. You need to understand your current messaging and where it can be improved. You need to know whether you're targeting the right audience or not. You need to know if your brand image is as impactful as it can be. All of this and much, much more should be covered in your marketing plan. Take advantage of the clarity that it can provide you on your path to improvement. Moving on to misconception number three, professional websites or marketing can be expensive. It may be hard to believe, but there are still small business websites out there that look like they were designed in the AOL dial-up days. Remember those CDs? If that's the case with your site, you can't run to the nearest web designer fast enough. There is no excuse for any website or marketing to be poorly designed anymore. Before you say, that's not me, Steven, remember that technology moves incredibly fast and website years are like dog years. A website without frequent updates is considered outdated only after two years. Now, while you might find that frustrating, that's the reality of technology dependent world that we live in now. What worked for your business two years ago won't work today or two years from today. To top it off, your prospective customers might be finding your outdated website more frustrating than your pain of needing to update your site every two years. In other words, the opportunity cost from lost business that you likely missed is often far more than the expense of hiring a true professional to do it right the first time versus say a freelancer or someone's relative who designs websites or <laughs> taking a DIY approach. Professionally designed sites are the resume for your business. It's the central online hub that all your online and your offline marketing points to. No matter how someone finds out about your business, whether it's from a direct mailer or a billboard, print ad, or social media, people seeking your services will demand that your site is easy to navigate. If it's not, you've already lost them. They've clicked onto the next search result. They don't have time to get lost nor have they got their questions answered clearly. Your site needs to have a clear, unified brand image and message. We've talked about this in previous podcasts and in my book. It should have a user interface designed with best practices in mind so that it's designed either for direct sales and or lead generation. Just be careful of hiring a web design only company because they often lack a holistic understanding of marketing and sales. Clarifying your brand's messaging 
and they will likely forget other components that should go into consideration of the design process. Even if your website is already professionally designed, don't just assume that you have more traffic than you actually do. Most businesses don't know how to keep track of or properly analyze their website traffic. Hire a professional like us to correctly interpret this valuable data and explain it to you. The best thing about your website is that you actually own it. You have control over its appearance, its messaging, and how it can be used and when it can be used. It's an owned asset. Leverage that power and use it wisely. Specifics about web best practices will always continue to evolve, but the principles stay the same. Clear messaging is key and user-friendly design is paramount. Let's move on to misconception number four. Branding is just a logo. Wrong. Branding is so much more than just a logo. So what is exactly a brand, Steven? The short answer is that it's everything. It includes everything your brand does as a business and everything that it touches. Your brand is the sum total of your customers, your employees, and the public's perceptions of and their experience with your business. Branding can change how people perceive your business. It can either drive new business or drive it away. It is the face, the personality, and values espoused by your business and everything in between. Strong brands have something far more in depth than just a logo, but a proper brand standards guide. Developing a consistent brand starts with creating a brand style guide. Have you ever looked at a brand and noticed why their stuff always looks better or sounds better or looks more polished than yours? Or maybe other brands that you've seen, if not yours? These branding rule books help graphic designers, marketers, web developers, community managers, and even product packaging departments all stay on the same page and present a unified vision of your brand to the public. Picture the most recognizable brands that you can think of. Go ahead, take a second and picture it. Chances are you've learned to recognize them because of the consistency across their messaging, written or visual that the brands broadcast. The same brand colors are reflected across them, the same fonts, the language sounds familiar. It's all very organized. For those of you watching the video version of our podcast, we'll take a quick look at an example of a recent brand standards guide that we've done for one of our clients. Every single facet of your business, whether it's your social media graphics, your signage, the tone of your voicemails, or the way your salespeople present, market, and deliverable your, deliver your service, captures the essence of your branding and sends an implicit message about how you respect your own business. Good branding increases the value of the company or the perceived value that people will pay for your product or service by having better branding and better brand image. It provides employees with direction and motivation and makes acquiring new customers easier. A professional brand is simple enough to be memorable but powerful enough to give you the desired impression of your company. People are more likely to purchase goods and services from a business that is consistent, polished, and relatable. Not only that, but they are likely to spend more on perceived value versus a brand with an amateur looking, poorly designed, or inconsistent brand image. Properly designed brand standards will guide your brand and everyone who touches it on how to keep it consistent and professional. And finally, let's move on to the last misconception of the day which is traditional media is dead and digital is in. Facebook and Instagram have their place, but there is still a need to reach a mass audience through traditional forms of communication, such as radio, television, billboards, maybe direct mail or events, etc. In the United States, working professionals spend an average of 25 minutes heading to work in their cars. This explains why radio advertising is still an ideal place to advertise certain types of businesses. It's the one place that digital is not supposed to be the primary attention grabber, even though people break this rule every day because they can't seem to keep their fingers off their cell phones. Part of your marketing plan should be a section that includes ways to grow awareness, engagement, and sales with traditional forms of mass media buying. Successful companies such as Coca-Cola spend nearly six billion, that's billion with a capital B, in media buying annually and a good portion of that is traditional media outlets. Household brands like this are incredibly smart when it comes to their marketing, yet are still implementing many of the same basic principles that I'm teaching you in this podcast and also more in depth in my book. And they wouldn't invest that kind of capital back into their business on an annual basis 
if it didn't generate an ROI. In short, misconception number five is not just about traditional mass media like TV. Mass media is simply a method to reach a larger audience. There are literally dozens of ways to take advantage of mass media. Be sure to use them to maximize the top of your sales funnel or what we referred to in an earlier episode and in my book as the awareness stage. In other words, they've got to know your business or your product or your service exists before they can do business with you. That's a guarantee. Well, we learned a lot today from expanding on misconceptions from some of our everyday viewers' comments. Let's briefly recap what we learned today. Social media will not solve your brand's communications or sales problems. Clarifying your message and having enough skin in the game or enough widespread reach to your target audience will help. You do need a marketing plan. No one ever accidentally fell into success. Success takes consistency and a written plan to get there. Having a plan helps give you the clarity and focus in your journey to reaching your goals. Third thing we learned is having professional help, such as a professional website, can be expensive. While initially it can be considered a big investment for some companies up front, in the long run you're likely losing more sales from a homemade or bad website or do-it-yourself, or even a professional site that may have confusing messaging or a confusing layout. Thus the missed sales opportunities are likely costing you more than if you had done things right the first time. The fourth thing we learned today was brand standards are very important. Any strong brand starts with a strong foundation. And the brand standards guide sets that tone for consistency in your brand's messaging and image, both externally and often overlooked internal marketing. And finally, although digital media is booming, traditional media is by no means dead. Understanding who your audience is and where they are is only half the battle. The other secret ingredient to the recipe is having enough skin in the game. Traffic or eyeballs, or what I call awareness, remember we had a podcast and, and a chapter on my book a while back on this dedicated to awareness, is one of the second most common marketing mistakes that cause failure in marketing strategies. First, they gotta know you exist, and then you gotta reach enough eyeballs. The sales is just a numbers game. So simply put, most businesses just don't have enough skin in the game around their awareness strategy. In other words, they aren't spending enough money to drive enough traffic to, get, to convert enough numbers that they need to succeed. Traditional mass media, such as TV, radio, billboard, they still reach millions of people in a concentrated mass. There's a reason companies spend billions on TV annually, because it's the easiest way to reach that many eyeballs. Even if a good percentage of those eyeballs isn't their target audience, the sheer volume is there to make a good ROI. Now, before you go buying mass media, there are other proven principles to be aware of on how to properly buy mass media and awareness. And maybe, hey, we'll do an episode on those rules in the future. But the general principle still remains. Mass awareness works. Well, fans, we learned a lot today. That's all the time we have in this episode. I hope you found some of this information helpful. As always, please give us a comment and a review. Click subscribe to our channel and help us spread the word. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for listening to the Marketing Mindshift Podcast. If you're enjoying learning from Steven on this podcast, please be sure to show your support by rating, reviewing, and subscribing on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Please make sure to also share this podcast with your friends on social media. If you're looking for more resources to help take your business growth skills to the next level or for a copy of Stephen's book, you can find that at getstevensbook.com. Thanks again for tuning into the Marketing Mindshift podcast with Stephen Newland. Order your copy of the Marketing Mindshift at getstevensbook.com and follow us on social media at Synergy Creative and at Stephen Newland.